The best we can tell is maybe there's at least three, there might be four little bunnies in there. I'm gonna mix up some fertilizer this morning. My plants are struggling for some extra food. And what I do like to use is this Alaska fish fertilizer. It smells horrid, but it does work. So um, of course it's a 511. Um, so what it says to do is add two tablespoons per gallon of water. So I only use this sprayer for fertilizer. So I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of this stinky, stinky stuff. I used water that I brought from the dehumidifier. I poured most of the water in the rain barrel, but I poured a gallon of it in here, so I'm not using well water. So this is the dehumidifier that we have out here in the shop. And we have two mini splits in here, and we can put them on dehumidify. But what we decided to do was to use this, and then every weekend that we're here, we do have about 10 to 15 gallons of water that comes out of this slab and into the air. So we use that, it's a little extra step, but I take it out and I water in the garden that doesn't have drip irrigation. And I've also been putting it in the rain barrel. Um, so I hate for it to go to waste. Because we're on well water, I don't want to use up all our well water all the time. So instead of pouring it down the drain, we pour it in the buckets and then we move it out where we need it. And I'll show you how this works. And it's almost full, so that's good. It's just a little tray. It fills up with water. And then we just transfer it to a bucket. and start it again and then reuse that water i'm using the water oh it smells so bad Just turn your stomach bad there's one two oh take you out to the garden and spray and let me show you what we have in the garden it's not vegetables it's not fruit and it's not flowers. Something even better. All right. All right, before I spray, I'm gonna give you a little tour and show you the most precious thing in this garden. I got my basket. I'm gonna do a little bit of collecting this morning before we go, a little bit of harvesting. But so far we've had the mockingbird babies, the nest in the grapevine. And then last week I found the snake egg nest in the potatoes. And yesterday there is a bunny nest right down in here. I hope you can see it on camera. Our little dog Sammy got in here yesterday and scared one of the bunnies out and it was screaming. And so then I discovered this nest was in here. Can you believe that? You can't really see them. Best we can tell is maybe there's at least three, there might be four little bunnies in there. I haven't seen, I saw mama one time, and so I don't know where the breach in the garden is, but we're just gonna leave it. And, you know, of all the things you want in your garden, probably not a bunny nest, but they're just precious. So we're gonna let them stay right there and grow up, which makes me very happy. I'm not sure what the fencing keeps out. Maybe the deer. <laughs> so I'm going to go down this row and spray not around the bunnies. I'm going to skip the bunnies. I'm going to spray these tomatoes right at the base. And I'm going to skip the bunnies and come on down here so they're not disturbed. And fertilize. Because 
our crops are producing so much right now it's, they're using a lot of energy uh, I really need to be fertilizing every week probably or at least every two weeks it's just hard to do everything when we're only here a few days but I'm gonna get it now and this will give them a little boost I'm going to fertilize the peppers. And the cucumbers, because they are producing like crazy. Cabbage. I do have cabbage growing, even though it's hot. We had such a cool spring that I had some cabbage plants and I just planted them. And I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize Cosmos because it's so pretty. And get these cucumbers. Cucumbers have been producing like crazy. I'm gonna get in there. I see some cucumbers, but I'll get in there and harvest after I spray. All right, I'm gonna spray some beets. I'm not gonna spray the kale. I'm not doing a whole lot and I don't really care too much about the kale right now. Some of the carrots I'll spray. Some fertilizer on the carrots. Back in here. Stay away from the bunnies. All right. We'll just keep going down this one line. I planted strawberries up in here with my asparagus and I noticed that the tops are getting clipped off. That should have been my first clue that there was a rabbit in the garden. I did see the adult rabbit one time. I'm not gonna worry about spraying the asparagus. I'm gonna spray here. I've got tomatoes, Roma tomatoes that I planted and then all the cucumbers you see on this cattle panel were all volunteer. And they are producing as well. So we're going to get this fertilized pretty heavily down here around the base of each plant along here. So they will continue to produce. Yes, this is the time of year that they really need some help. Cayenne peppers. Uh-oh, what was that frog? <laughs> it's good to have frogs in your garden too. I have frogs. There's one little cayenne pepper turning red on here. They've been really slow. I've never grown cayenne peppers before. They're really slow. What's coming on? All of this volunteered. The tomatoes and the cucumbers. <laughs> this whole group volunteered right up and started growing. So, okay. Sometimes those are your healthiest plants. I can't really see the base, but I'm gonna get in there best I can. Bees everywhere. The bees have been really strong this year. The butterflies are just now coming on. All right, I am gonna hit the strawberry plant that's trying to recover where it got nibbled. And I don't see anything else that's really been hit hard by the rabbit. I guess when the babies come out, we'll have a different story to tell. All right, let's get on down here to our tomatoes where we strung up the tomatoes. They're getting tall. I like this, it's working good. There's some swallowtails. 
um, the black ones and the yellow ones. All of those zinnias volunteered, every one of them. And everyone down here in the corner all volunteered. I didn't plant any of those. So once you can establish an area of zinnias, they will produce for you year after year after year. Now that row over there in the between the potatoes, I just plucked um, zinnia plants that were growing over here and just planted them. I re repositioned them over there and they just flourished. So technically I didn't plant any seed there either. So pretty incredible. All right, we're gonna get this row of tomatoes. Now, disregard the grasses down here. I've done a good job with keeping the first part of the garden grass free, but it's hard down here. I'm gonna try to uh, sow and plant some winter crop at home, start some seedlings. I have grow lights at home. And so I'm gonna try that and then I'm gonna plant some cold weather crops down here. I'll get this weeded and plant down here so it won't be such a mess. All right, we're gonna, these are a new variety of hot pepper I've never planted before down here. So let's give them a little grow juice. All right, I'm gonna get these tomatoes look a little shriveled up for some reason. My drip is messed up, it's whacked out. The timer will not shut off, so I've got to get in there today and figure out. I can't have it dripping all day, every day, all night, all every night. So it's been working fine, and then all of a sudden, it's not, you know how that goes. These are the bigger tomatoes here. All the tomatoes at the front of the garden are all Romas, which are great for salsa and spaghetti sauce, but they're not good for cutting, slicing, and having a tomato sandwich. These are all the bigger ones. And they're producing flowers. Just don't see a lot of tomatoes on these yet. These got in kind of late. There's a video where I planted these. Just strung them up. All right, so that half is done. Now, I'm gonna try to get in here and spray the zucchini and the squash. I did cut the grass out last week, but it's already growing back. I couldn't even get in here last week. And then I'm gonna get the jalapeno peppers. And this is yellow zucchini. It'll have a little green on the ends and sometimes um, mottled up in there, but this yellow zucchini is so delicious. I don't know why it's different or why the flavor profile seems to be different, but it just seems a little creamier. So uh, this year, that's I do have some other zucchini and yellow squash It's not doing too great, but um, our favorite by far is this yellow zucchini. It is just delicious, so it's worth getting. If you didn't plant it this year, or I actually have time to plant some more this year, depending on where you live. And we're gonna fertilize these jalapeno peppers.
I was blessed with an abundance of local peaches, which I've frozen most of them now as they're out, but I made peach jalapeno jelly for the first time. It was delicious. So if you've not tried that with your just your pale hot pepper jelly, try adding peach to it. This, it was so good. Trying to think of things to do with the peaches besides your basic peach jam, peach cobbler, done that, but peach jalapeno, oh, so good. All right, we're going to finish up with the butter beans and the dragon tongue beans. help give them a little perk 